So let me say this. One of the most important things that we need to teach young men is delayed gratification. If you just eat what you want to eat, smoke what you want to smoke, drink what you want to drink, and sleep with who you want to sleep with, you're going to ruin generations. Okay? Our culture does not teach delayed gratification. You don't, you don't need to save, just go into debt. You don't need to wait to be married, just move in and sleep together. But you, you don't need to practice self-control, you just drink and eat whatever you want and just wreck your life and go into debt and then vote for a socialist who will send you a stimulus check so you can continue your extended adolescence. Right? Right. And if that offends you, you don't have a job. You know, I tried teaching that to my son at a very early age and it only took him 25 years to actually get it. Hello, Bezel T3. That was Mark Driscoll, former pastor of the now defunct Mars Hill Church in Seattle and presently senior pastor of the Trinity Church in Scottsdale, Arizona. Now here's Mark talking with his wife Grace about the Scottsdale church plant back in February 2016. Uh, how are you feeling about a church plant? We did one a long time ago. We're not as young as we used to be, and the energy levels, at least for me, are not the same. Uh, how are you feeling about a church plan? <laughs> that had to be a very tricky question for Grace Driscoll in light of the sudden and total collapse of Mars Hill Church back in 2014, precipitated by allegations of, and I quote, bullying and spiritual abuse of members and church leaders, misogyny and homophobia. Now, I don't normally put much stock in what the Daily Beast has to say, but they're not the only ones who were saying it. Just before I left for vacation, my elder, John, at the church that I attend, recommended a Christianity Today podcast to me. It's called The Rise and Fall of Mars Hill. It's a compelling, revealing, and tragic story of the meteoric rise of a young, charismatic, unconventional pastor whose popularity and power far outpaced his Christian character, and ultimately, like the Greek mythical figure Icarus, flew too near the sun with wings made of wax and fell to earth, a victim of his own success, and ultimately caused the utter shipwreck of the church he founded. Now, the next two clips are from a 2011 fundraising documentary just two years before the 2014 collapse. The red alert warnings are hard to miss. How did I get ordained? I, I needed to be licensed so I could do weddings and funerals and stuff, so I ordained myself. I got a couple pastors together and said, I don't know what it means to be ordained, but I know I need to get ordained to do weddings and funerals, so could you guys go ahead and ask me some questions, and if you think I pass, just take a vote. I, I, so I basically put together an ordination committee, and I got myself ordained. <laughs> Mark ordained himself. You know, that's kind of like giving yourself a complete physical exam, not being a doctor. It was a red flag of Mark's reluctance from the very get-go to come under the authority of an ecclesiastical governing body with a defined church polity, pastoral oversight, and moral and ethical accountability. By way of contrast, this is what is required for ordination in the PCA, the Presbyterian Church in America, of which I'm a member. It's the uh, conservative one. Uh, first off is church membership. A candidate for ordination must be a member of a PCA church for at least six months. The next step is to come under care of a PCA presbytery, which is a regional group of particular church leaderships, or we call them sessions. A candidate for ordination must be licensed by his presbytery. This includes personal statement of Christian experience and inward call, knowledge of biblical doctrine as outlined in the PCA's confessional documents, practical knowledge of the Bible, and basic knowledge of PCA church government as outlined in the Book of Church Order. Add to that an internship in a local church for at least a year, which usually occurs uh, during a time of sound ministry, or I should say seminary, training. Only then can a candidate receive a call, be ordained, and then installed as a minister of word and sacrament at the church that has called him. Or you could just have a couple of your pastor buddies ask you a few questions and ordain yourself. Oof, 
We're really privileged to be one of those churches that he has chosen to pour out an excessive amount of grace on. And now we're just trying to figure out how to be good stewards and leverage that so that we can maximize the opportunities. The truth is, this is one of those grace waves that you don't know how long it goes, but you want to ride it faithfully as long as you possibly can, and then get off your board and tell the story to your grandkids. <laughs> Boy, it didn't turn out that way, that's for sure. Ride the grace wave as long as you can. Well, it turns out that wave was a rogue shore pounder that took everyone riding it right over the falls, slamming them violently into the sand. Remember, this was produced only two years before Mark Driscoll was charged with a lack of self-control, verbally assaulting others, creating a culture of fear, and acting out towards anyone who was brave enough to challenge, disagree, or check him in any way. Now, it's important for me to note that Driscoll was never accused of any kind of blatant immorality or theological heresy. However, his edginess and hot temper would reveal itself even in this teaching. Here's Mark coming unglued during a sermon when speaking to any man, potentially, in the audience who might be shacking up with someone. Let's take a look. Some of you have already whispered in her ear, I'm sorry, I'll do better, trust me, let's just move on real quickly. How dare you? Who in the hell do you think you are? Mm. Abusing a woman, neglecting a woman, being a coward, a fool, being like your father, Adam. Who do you think you are? Man, that is severe. Now, committing sexual sin of any kind is a serious uh, thing, and Christians need to be admonished through the preaching of God's word as the subject is broached in the text. Now, I'm not sure it was or not there, but if Mark would go off like that during a sermon, one can only imagine how he would act in private if he got hot under the collar with one of his subordinates. So fast forward to 2021, and we find Mark holding the position of senior pastor of The Trinity Church in Scottsdale, Arizona. If you go to the church's website, you'll find something very curious. Under the Our Leadership tab, we find Mark at the top of the page. Now what's missing here is any mention at all of Mark having been pastoring Mars Hill Church. What you will find is a list of Mark's engagements with well-known celebrities such as Deepak Chopra, Barbara Walters, Dr. Drew Pinsky, and Piers Morgan. Definitely red alert worthy. Mm -hmm. Apparently, Mark would rather forget about the decades-long experience he had at Mars Hill in hopes that everyone else will too. Now, the clip I used in the intro was from a sermon Mark preached in March of 2021 on the doctrine of predestination. Now, I want you to look at that uh, picture right there and notice that the likes, dislikes, and comments are all disabled, as are all of his YouTube content. Now, that's not so unusual with certain pastors, but it does make one wonder. So I'm listening to this sermon, and all of a sudden, Mark starts he starts in with something very unpredestinationish, and um, and what we're working on now is uh, an offering called All Things New, and what we're asking God is, would the people contribute generously a one-time gift? What I'd like to do is finish the campus, get the studio, get the classroom space open. I'd like to build a park out front for people to hang and kids to play. Finish the parking lot. There's some things we need to do. <laughs> Goodness sakes. I counted five things that Mark wants to do and is asking God that the people would give to. And the people there are they're right in front of him. Those uh, things are not small potatoes either. But hey, God makes all things new. So why not a new campus, a new studio, classrooms, a new parking lot, and a park for the kids? And so I asked you a week and a half ago for $1.5 million above and beyond. That's a lot of cheddar. Between now and Easter. Somebody came forward and said, I'll do a matching fund to 300,000. A couple other people came forward and said, we'll push that to 530,000. So every gift you give between now and Easter is doubled up to $530,000. That's a lot of money. I'm happy to report that we're already two thirds of the way to our goal after a week. <sighs> You know, I gotta say, Mark speaks with such confidence and conviction that I almost want to contribute to his vision cast. Almost. 
And the last thing I give you to pray for is campuses as we fill up. Uh, our whole prayer and goal is to go to campuses and I have a heart for the Northwest side of town. I don't have a word from God, but that's the prayer. Oh no, oh no. Satellite campuses? Um, that should make anyone familiar with Mark's history very nervous. It sounds a lot like Mars Hill Empire Building 2.0. And even more concerning is this blog post that comes from a Warren Throckmorton, professor of psychology at Grove City College in Grove City, Pennsylvania. He wrote this in April 2021. In short, a jury of his elder peers found him to be disqualified to be a pastor elder. Instead of being restored by those elders, he left the scene and eventually started a new church, the Trinity Church in Scottsdale, Arizona. It should come as little surprise that Mark Driscoll's new church apparently has solved the elder problem, which led to his demise at Mars Hill. They just don't have any. During the past couple weeks, several former members of the Trinity Church in Scottsdale have contacted me to talk about aspects of Mars Hill Church in Seattle. They contacted me due to my coverage of Mars Hill from late 2013 to 2015. They tell stories remarkably similar to those I heard from former Mars Hill members during that span of time. There is one major difference. In the current church, there are no elders who are putting on any breaks. There are no elders to whom appeals can be made. Several former members and staffers have told me that the Trinity Church does not have elders. Oh, wow. Okay. What it does have is a board, as you can see here in this church document, a board to govern and senior pastor Mark, who leads the church. But this organizational, organizational chart of the Trinity Church has Mark as top banana, and the board is nowhere to be found at all. Now, in this section of that same church document, we see a statement which reads, Our church is a family business. Yeah. The word church and business should never, ever be used in the same sentence. Throckmorton continues. He goes on to say that non-disclosure agreements are again being used, as they were in Mars Hill. And I found this on another web page that pretty much confirms it. Again, I quote from Throckmorton. Money is again conditioned on silence. People are describing abrupt decisions about membership without due process. Friends and family who are considered disloyal to the church are being shunned. At some point, these stories may be told. For now, according to former members and staff, the pastors who are there in addition to Driscoll are not elders in the decision-making sense of the office. If elders hold you accountable in one place, eliminate them in the next place. How dare you? Who in the hell do you think you are? Well, to answer your question, Mark and Greta, if you're interested, I'm Bezel T3, and I'm simply sharing and discussing what is in plain sight. Now, I can't confirm that all of these claims are factual in every respect. However, if even 50% of these claims are true, then this empire building reboot has looming disaster written all over it. So, if there are any members of the Trinity Church who have stumbled across this video and are concerned about the future of the church, here is my suggestion. The membership of the Trinity Church should immediately create a petition that the assistant pastors slash elders, because that is what they are, be given biblical oversight, and that in addition, qualified elders from the congregation be chosen, ordained, and installed to create a session of overseers that if needed, and this is their job, can protect the congregation from the senior pastor who has shown a propensity towards playing pope wherever he happens to land. Also, that the church bylaws be made available to all members if indeed they are not at this time. You see, elders are not optional in a Christian church. They are crucial and they are mandatory, as are deacons. Paul, in his letter to Titus, instructed him to appoint elders in every town. And he gives detailed qualifications of the kind of character traits they are to have, much like he does in his first letter to Timothy. And in Hebrews 13 we read, Obey your leaders and submit to them for they are keeping watch over your souls as those 
who will have to give an account. And as I was working on this video, I remember doing one on Mark back in 2012. And I'll end with a few thoughts from that video. Now, Mars Church is not a mega church, but rather a mega amount of satellite churches with one single senior pastor who was virtually present most Sundays at each location via video. Mark Driscoll is a fascinating case study of postmodern and unorthodox methodologies juxtaposed, for the most part, with biblical sound preaching and teaching. Mark is known for his theologically conservative yet culturally liberal style of communication, and to be honest, I am on the one hand refreshed by it and on the other kind of embarrassed by it. But my concern about Mark and Mars Hill Church is this. Any pastor that experiences the rapid success that Mark Driscoll has over the last years is constantly in danger of a very common temptation, and that is pride. And I'm concerned for Mark when I see Mars Hill's church planting efforts in multiple locations that continue to feature Mark as the primary preacher and pastor, albeit virtual. The kingdom of God has no place for celebrity pastors or a cult of personality. And Mark said it himself, what matters is that the word of God is rightly preached. But the implication by having Mark preaching ubiquitously at all these church locations, as it were, via technology, is that he, and not the B-team pastors who are serving there, is the only one who can truly hold Mars Hill Church together.